Y'all, I got too many decks. I really do. Anyway, welcome back to Sessions with Kat. Um, I don't have any, like, updates in particular, except for um, pretty soon I'm going to be shooting out an email with all of the classes that I'm going to be offering and in what order they will be offered. Um, so if you're not on my email listing, then you probably should do that. Um, I will put the link below on how to sign up. Other than that, let's get into it. This is not a deck review, okay? It's not. Um, I backed this set on Kickstarter and it was like a four deck set because you should not judge me. Um, <laughs> and as promised in the last video, I told you guys I would start showing you a little bit more animal decks that you can use to kind of like connect with animal spirits and the energy of them and, you know, use them in your healing journey if that's what you feel called to. Um, as for me, because I do work with animal energy when I'm doing healing work and even when I'm doing readings, I do pick up on animal um, spirits. I like to buy decks that have animal energy and basic kind of on the types of clients that I have and what kind of decks that they would connect to. So um, if this is up your alley, I do know that I have seen this deck on Etsy. I have not seen it on Amazon. So if you use Etsy, look there or just kind of Google it, it should come up. But I got the four decks through Kickstarter. Okay, so that being said, let's get into it. So, this is the Joy Seeker Oracle. Um, honestly, I love the colors of this deck. Again, this is not a deck review. I just want you guys to know why I bought it. I bought the deck because my guides told me to. Okay, that is why I have that four pack deck. It is not because one card called out to me. It's because my guy said, bitch, you need it. And I said, for what? And they were like, for healing. I'm like, on who? And they're like, everyone. So get the damn decks. So I got the damn decks. So here we are. This is one of four. There are two. No, there's this one Orgo. And then the other three are tarot cards. And I'm excited about those. But I tend to use Orgos too through the videos. If you want to see the tarot decks, let me know. Um, and then I will show the show those as well. Um, yeah, so remember to like, share, and comment. And when you comment, let me know what card stuck out to you or what part of the message stuck out to you. Or even if you just want to say hi to me, say hi, I'll say hi back. All right? Just, you know, engage. That's kind of the whole point of me doing this. I didn't want to do... Um, a patreon because why should i make you fucking pay to talk to me i don't like i understand artists and you know, like people who teach and shit using that i don't need to use that so we're not going to um you know the deck i mean the book is in color so if you're one of those people who needs color in your book here you go it's pretty awesome. I love that it begins and ends like that. So, um, there's that. So, today we're going to talk about letting go. And some of y'all don't want to hear it. And I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to lie to you. I want you to hear this because I'm going to try to deliver it as softly as I can. Okay? But I want you to pay attention. I want you to understand that I'm coming from a very motherly love kind of tough love place because I have noticed this over the past few years with the clients that I get like the new ones y'all motherfuckers don't like letting go y'all hold on like baby hold on to like, like a fucking bottle or like fucking a uh, piece of candy or some shit. You know that death grip that babies have? Y'all be having that shit when y'all want to let go. I don't, I don't fully understand it. And maybe I'm not supposed to. But uh, 
it's time to loosen the death grip. Y'all be out here like dark bathing and shit, like just gripping motherfuckers and holding on to, to broken memories and, and broken shit because you're still hurt. <sighs> Stop recruiting for your struggles. Recruit for your success. And what that means is stop being a victim stop blaming yourself for some shit you probably didn't have control over right you you got to be wise about it okay you got to use that wisdom all right you got to use that sight that mind that that like tune into yourself and go this can't be healthy to keep holding on to um and honestly the the best example i can give you because i am I'm included in that shit, right? I've always known I've had an allergy to gluten, okay? I've always known that I've had an allergy to gluten, okay? I've always been warned, hey, bitch, stop eating so much gluten, okay? But the way I'm set up, I like bread, okay? Not gonna lie to you, okay? This, this bitch like bread. And I can't tell you how many times the doctor told me, slow down on your bread, okay? You need to slow down on the bread. You can't eat too much bread or your allergy gets worse. And me over here like, well, when it get worse, that's when I'll pay attention, right? I promise you, that's how my brain was working. I'm over here with a death grip on gluten like, yes, right? And then one day, you just break out in hives and they don't go away, right? They, they break out, they start on your boobs and this, this, this video ain't for kids, okay? Start on your boobs, go all the way down to your hoo-ha and you just got all up in your ass and shit. You got hives and you are trying not to scratch in public. Work that shit out, right? Then all of a sudden, they all over your face. Then they're all over your arms and then they're in your mouth. Now, I was one of those lucky childs to get, you know, to, to get chicken pox at a young age, first grade to be exact. And I got chicken pox all over, including inside my mouth. And that's how I knew this allergy was real because the fucking hive showed up in my mouth. Okay. I don't know about you, but you can't scratch the inside of your mouth without pulling all your skin and shit out because that's what you want to do. But I had a death grip on gluten. I was like, it can't be gluten. Why would it betray me? Like, literally, that's how my mind was going, right? And I was like, okay, I got to go to the doctor. I got to get an allergy test because I already know I'm allergic to animal products. I knew I had that gluten sensitivity, <laughs> right? I just didn't think it was gluten doing it to me. So finally, they get me in. And they were like, we'll email you your results. I was like, Psh, bet. They was like, until then, don't eat or drink anything. I was like, huh? I was like, where am I going to get nutrition from? <laughs> right? And what they meant, like, they didn't want me to, like, drink, like, milkshakes or anything like that. Number one, I'm allergic to milk, so it's like, I wasn't going to do that. But they told me I could have water. I was literally on a detox because they were trying to figure out what was wrong with me. Do you know, 24 hours later, that fucking doctor called and was like, yo, I rushed your results because there is no way. There is no way. And they were like, we told you to slow down on the fucking gluten and here you are with this 98% allergy i was like uh oh, gluten betrayed me right but my dumb ass was like there's a way around it right i was like i can take echinacea since benadryl ain't working no more i'm gonna take echinacea right thinking i can outsmart this shit that was hurting me okay thinking i can outsmart my body right i could you know, finagle a few things and, you know, get the hives to go away so I can eat the thing, right? And I fucked around and ate gluten, right? Specifically, this was, I was at the tail end of dealing with my food allergy. 
the gluten allergy is what did this this I mean this food addiction and that's what I meant to call it. So I mean sesame sticks because home skillet, you know, got a food addiction, right? So I call myself taking the echinacea afterwards. Tell me why the echinacea was like Yo, we just gonna make you throw us back up because we don't feel like working. Like, bitch, what? Right? So, I'm still trying to hold on to some shit that's hurting me. Okay? I'm literally burning myself. Right? I'm killing myself. Like, not, not. Like, I don't want y'all to think that I'm about to go off myself or some shit like that. But I'm, quote, unquote, killing myself by continuing to eat something that is that the allergy gets worse as you continue to eat it, right? So, I go to the doctor, the regular doctor. Actually, I went to, like, a urgent care. And they were like, why did you eat the very thing you're allergic to? I was like, because you're not my mama. Like, that's literally how I felt, right? And I sat there. I sat there. And the one ancestor, bless their heart, because I know they tired of me. Whispered in my ear like, bitch, we didn't raise you to harm yourself. Let that shit go. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to let it go, right? So after getting, you know, what I needed from urgent care and whatnot, I left. <laughs> I left there. And y'all, this was before my friend passed, so I was still in Michigan. I left there, went back to the house. I looked right at him, was like, so we got to throw all the gluten out because I don't need my ancestors snatching my edges. And he was like, I was waiting on that. I was like, fuck you, right? Like, that's how I felt. But I couldn't let go, right? That's, th that's where I'm getting to. Here's what I found. And Siri out here talking, talking shit. Just so y'all know, my watch was going off. <laughs> but I couldn't fucking let go, right? I'm over here like, yo, why are you holding on, girl? I'm like, what's the point of holding on? I had to get to the root of that, right? I had to get to the fucking root of it. I got tired of holding on to something that was killing me. Emotionally, mentally, spiritually. It was it was weighing me the fuck down. It was making it hard for me to read. It was making it hard for me to do proper healings. And so I would have to do like fast in between there to make sure that, you know, I was on, on my A game, right? And once I completely let go, everything shifted. I felt better. I got better. People who didn't need to be in my life were released. So I was just like, oh, okay. It was like I was facing the shadow part of it all, right? Nobody wants to face that because it hurts, okay? It's painful, okay? On a mental, emotional level, it's painful. On a physical level, I, I never felt better, right? There's no bloating. There's no highs. There's no... Um, you know, all the other crazy side effects of having allergies. You know, some people get constipated and all that stuff. D there's none of that, right? My scalp stopped itching, right? Like, every part of me that was affected by holding on to gluten feels better now, right? I even lost weight, That's what happens when you let go. You feel better. You start to see the fruits of that labor, right? That labor of letting go. So for those of you who have a problem letting go, pay attention to your mind, body, and spirit, okay? You need to know what that thing you hold on to is affecting, right? Because if it's preventing you from reaching your goals, baby, let it go. Let it go. I promise you, it ain't going to hurt. It ain't going to hurt after a while, right? It's going to hurt letting it go because your, your whole being is so used to holding it. But you got you to gotta free yourself at some point. 
right? You got to free yourself from your own, your own prison, right? And that's your lower self, the false ego, the, you know, that part of you, right? Because ego is good. It's just the false ego. It's not, right? The false ego is usually that mindset that tells you, here, be anxious. Here, be panicking and all that stuff. You have to free yourself from that bullshit-ass prison. And that's just the facts of it. Okay? That is really just the facts of it. You got to let go. You got to. It's not just about cutting cords. I want y'all to understand that. Because a lot of people come to me, like, for candle work and be like, oh, I need a cutting cord candle. I'm like, you going to cut the cord with yourself, too? But they don't want to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that they have to cut the part that they are holding on to as well. They just want the other side cut. They want, oh, help me get get rid of this and help me lose this memory of this. But you're the one holding on to it. So let me know when you want that cord cut as well. Right? Because there's work involved. The, it's not just about the candles. The work, the act. The actions that you take, right? What are you doing to help you let go, right? Are you practicing mindful? Are you being self-aware, right? Are you are you ready to let go? And it's not so much like ready, like, oh, I got my socks and shoes on, got my keys, got my wallet. We good. It's not that kind of ready. It's that ready of, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired of? That kind of ready. Because letting go ain't going to work until you re you've reached that point. I can't force you to let go. Right? You work with me, especially the walking home barefoot. I can't force you to, to let go. Baby, you got to want to do that on your own. You have to want to do that on your own. It is not my job nor my responsibility to force you to let go, right? However, if you are ready to let go, it is in my capacity to assist you in letting go, right? So that you get through it in a safe, healthy, and loving manner, okay? It's not always light and love, but it is. There is a way to get through it, right? Without feeling so hurt, feeling like a victim. Because you're not a victim, right? You're only a victim if you want to be. That's the God's honest truth. And that's that's part of why people don't let go. They want the attention that comes with being a victim. Fuck that. Uh-uh. I don't like enough people to want that kind of attention. Mm -mm. Like when, when my friend died... Um, I had one person say, I'm surprised, you know, you know, you haven't really been posting about it because I've been dealing with it. I'm not about to sit up here and be like, oh, well, it's me, my friend gone, my whole life changed. I did that when he died. Okay. January 13th is when my whole life fucking changed. But right now I'm in a whole new light. I ain't there. I'm not a victim. Right. I was I was I was a victim right then and there because I wasn't mentally ready for him to go, if that makes sense. Spiritually, did I know? I won't answer that. OK, because those are things that I'm not supposed to know, but I do. Right. But I wasn't ready. Right. I wasn't sick and tired of being sick and tired of him. Does that make sense? I wasn't ready. What I was, though, I was due for that type of rebirth. I was due for that whole um, shift, if that makes sense. I needed to come out of the comfort zone. I needed to let go. Does that make sense? I needed to let go. I needed to 
for once love on myself instead of loving on others. So I had to take that hiatus. I took that break and spirit made sure I took that break. That's why I couldn't record YouTube videos. Right. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, it was necessary. It was needed. It was wanted. Right. And did I want it to come at that expense? No, but that's the way that I had to roll. Right. But I want you guys to know letting go is okay. You ain't got to control everything. So stop fucking trying to do that. Stop fucking overanalyzing everything too. Okay? Because you ain't got to go that deep. You're not meant to understand everything as it's happening. You, you'll understand it later. But right now, we just got to take care of right now. Right? And right now, it probably ain't meant for you to understand it. And that's okay. That's okay, baby. It's okay. Right? You meant to just allow things to flow and let the fuck go of shit that's harming you. If it's not for your highest good, let that shit go. Now, that's a process. It is a process, okay? That shit don't happen overnight. But it happens because you want it to happen. It happens because you're ready for it to happen. It happens because the universe, your guides, and everybody put it in alignment for it to happen that exact way, right? Much like candle work, when someone say, oh, I want this person gone out of my life. I want them to disconnect, blah, 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 blah. And I do the candle and spirit be like, hell yeah. And boom. Then you over here like, I wasn't ready for that, but you asked for it because you were ready in that moment. And Spirit said, yeah, we've been ready, so we're going to do it. That kind of thing. So it's like, you know when you're ready. And Spirit will let you know, too, right? You can't be out here just holding on to shit that's <laughs> eating at your soul and then expecting the healer to repair it. That's not the healer's job. The healer's job is to assist you in repairing it and in assisting you we have to make sure that you have let go does that make sense or at least ready to let go that's the last card and that's the story so here we are and the message here simply is when you sick and tired of being sick and tired you'll let go Nobody can force it. Nobody's forcing you to do it. Okay? But your body will let you know when it needs to be done. Your mind will let you know. Your spirit, your whole last team will probably come at you and you'd be feeling like everybody attacking you when really you just need to let go of something. Right? You need to work through something. That's the shadow part. And you can use, you know animal spirits and animal energy to help you let go it just depends on what you're letting go of and what you need assistance with okay so that being said i hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and a you know beautiful one at that stay hydrated make sure you're eating make sure you're you know doing what you need to practice mindfulness um and all that goodness all right Again, like, share, comment. If you want to get on the email listing, let me know. My email and whatnot will be in the description box. And yeah, we'll go from there. All right. So y'all have a good one. And we'll be talking next week. Bye.